exactly what it's called. Uh, it's not a, a handout, true handout, it's just what French call exemplier. So we're looking at these examples, not to put them all uh, on, the, on the slides. In the slides. Um, um, Lectures, Nina presented an overview of social technology uh, in Dagestan. And so, what I was going to, uh, um, uh, to present was uh, trying to connect this data uh, to what we know about lexical content in Dagestan. But then I realized at some point that um, part of the information, or maybe major part of the information, uh, um, uh, that I was going to talk about uh, um, in this uh, lecture uh, was put into the two posters presented uh, by uh, myself, uh, Ilya, and uh, Samila Bekris uh, yesterday and the day before yesterday by Samila. Uh, so I decided to uh, kind of limit the lexical part of the of the talk on the second part of the lecture, and today I wanted to, uh, yeah, to um, draw a map. Uh, so today I decided to talk more about pattern boring, to give you example, and to discuss them with you, um, and to see what problems uh, looking at these examples uh, in terms of language context or other interpretations may provide. So today's lecture is, um, oops, uh, is about we will see it, we will look at some. Uh, Apple similarities uh, within the family, and we'll see what different interpretations can be provided for this. More or less, uh, mm, let's say, uh, convincing, uh, sometimes several interpretations, what kind of interpretations can be provided with, for these similarities. Uh, just to give you a small background for those of you who didn't uh, go to, uh, to Nina's, uh, Nina Subatova's uh, course, um, I wanted to remind you that the family is a very deep level uh, family, uh, probably deeper than Indo-European. Uh, there is a significant lexical divergence in core vocabulary between the languages, and uh, many neighbor, most neighboring languages are not mutually uh, intelligible. Okay, it's, it's hard to say most or not most because it depends on what, what points on the map you choose, but very often uh, neighboring languages uh, are not mutually intelligible at all. Uh, and very often what is considered to be different dialects is also not mutually intelligible. So a, quite a strong uh, uh, lexical divergence. Um, uh, on the other hand, there is, uh, there is a um, presence of lexical contact, unlike what Patty uh, uh, presented uh, in these days, saying that there are some areas in the world where lexical, lexical influence between the languages is not so visible. In our, in our language, both lexical contact and strong structural alignment uh, are visible. So structural similarity, uh, and uh, of course it's interesting for us to distinguish between structural similarity uh, that are, as I will, uh, as I will um, say, inherited versus those that come through language contact. So that would be basically the, uh, the main um, topic for discussion in this, uh, in this lecture. Um, uh, uh, you certainly saw, those of you who went to the, to the lectures certainly saw already this map. Uh, right? I don't know how many of you uh, were in Nina Sumatova's course. Uh, yeah, so just certain overlap between the courses. Um, you see the map here, and what I always adored about uh, the map of uh, uh, linguistic map of Amazonia was that it, it it presents kind of patchwork of families, right? So you have uh, various families spread like, you know, you first put salt and then pepper and it's all, it's all, uh, it's all in different places. Uh, in Dagestan, uh, it's not that. It's not like that. Uh, if you look at the, uh, at the map of, uh, I, didn't give you, I didn't provide here a more general map of, uh, of uh, the Caucasus, but you will basically see that there are East Caucasian languages in the east, 
east, west location in the northeast, or uh, in the in the northeast, uh, then west location languages in the northwest, and the south location languages uh, in the south. Um, there are, however, uh, some kind of mismatches because you have uh, more or less entropically uh, uh, present uh, non uh, endemic languages like Ossetic, it will be mentioned uh, later. You have Armenian, of course, uh, you have Turkic languages here and there. In Dagestan, you would, uh, they are not mapped here because they are Turkic, so this is only uh, the family map of East Caucasian. But here you have Kumik and then Nogai in the north, and here you have Azerbaijani. I will show another map tomorrow when we will be talking about classical languages. Um, but um, uh, even within East Caucasian, you will see some kind of mismatches. So you have enough language, but B1 village language outside Dagestan uh, at all, so it's surrounded by Georgian. Um, you have Archi, a Lethic language, which is reasonably isolated from the other, the, the bulk of other Lethic languages. That's a major, uh, the, the fattest uh, branch of, uh, of East Caucasian is Lethic. Uh, and so you, you see the Archi language here, uh, which is both in all ways uh, uh, visibly isolated from, from, the, uh, from other Lethic languages because here it's kind of impassable uh, mountains. Nobody knows how to get there. Um, uh, then you have, for instance, Akbah, small, uh, several Akbah speaking villages uh, in the Avar speaking area of uh, Azerbaijan. Uh, you have another language we will be talking about, it's Merwer, which it has been isolated from the main uh, land, from the Darwa main land the other languages of uh, Darva range for at least three to five hundred years. Uh, you have another village uh, here. This is a, an Avar village, uh, an enclave uh, uh, of Avar uh, within Darva speaking area. So you have you know, some kind of um, family internal kind of approximation to a patchwork. But uh, at least these villages, Chuni, Merwe Chuni, maybe Akbahto, are not very old ancient settlements. So they do not, uh, they structurally and lexically, well, reasonably close to the, to the Middle East. Uh, Archie is different. Archie has, uh, has been separated from, from the other uh, countries for hundreds of years, maybe for a couple of thousands of years. And also, uh, Udi here is very isolated language, so we'll probably cut off um, uh, on uh, the family for, uh, for very long and structurally uh, very different in many ways uh, from other plastic languages. Do you have any So, my point here is that you have a certain dispersal of uh, the representatives of the branch, but on the whole, this is not Amazonian. You have a, a rather consistent mapping of, uh, uh, of the language branches. And uh, first of all, this is all one family. There, there is some presence of Turkey here, uh, some villages X, uh, uh, where, where, where uh, an Iranian language that was spoken here, never, it's not spo uh, spoken here anymore. But otherwise, it's pretty homogeneous in a sense, in terms of mapping. Okay? Uh, again, for some reason, uh, so, uh, these are things that, that Nina probably mentioned in her overview. Uh, common structural properties uh, of languages include presence of adjectives in all languages of the family. Uh, in some, in quite a few languages, uh, which is more rare, uh, the position between intensives uh, and aspirated, uh, voiceless stops. Um, widespread contrast differentialization, which is also uh, present in very different branches, so that would be also another to interesting topic of area of research. Um, sex based gender, sex based in terms of, uh, uh, of corporate, uh, corporate uh, approach to gender. It doesn't mean that you only have uh, masculine and feminine neuter, you have in some, in some languages you have three way distinction, some languages you have four way distinction, some way more, but basically it's the, the, the it includes the distinction between, uh, between men and women. Um, uh, then you have two layers of spatial morphology that has been, I think, presented by Nina. So what you usually have as spatial forms include two morphemes, uh, first locating the or, or localization, uh, locating uh, an object in the space with respect to a landmark, and the other morpheme at the outer layer uh, denotes motion towards or, up or out of this spatial area, or through the spatial area, and so on. 
So this is also um, uh, also pretty common, except that Nach and UD either lost this distinction or maybe probably never developed. But otherwise, this is a very very salient feature, ecological feature of the family. Uh, data subject experience curve. So of course, this is uh, this is more ecologically peculiar. This is le much less ecologically peculiar. But many languages tend to have their experience here, subjects in the data or in some other uh, in some other uh, kind of strategy. You you talked about that, right? So I I can't because it's not the topic of of, of today's talk. Uh, then you have non-finite subordination. You don't usually. Yes. Uh, yeah, um, you have convertible coordination, what has been discussed as a continuum between coordination and subordination by, by, by means of converts, what is sometimes called convert chaining. Uh, you have a, a connection between logophoric and long distance or simply reflexives, um, which is also not unknown in other parts of the world, like in Germany, in Latin, uh, in Southeast Asia, so it's, it's present, this kind, this kind of connection. And you also have, uh, in, in quite a few languages, uh, what is called binomial support in other traditions, but the absolutive construction has been described. So, a lot of structural variables. But the question for us, because we're here in the school, uh, is uh, what... I'm sorry, there's some, some things that I don't here, but I hope you can read it, right? So, uh, our question is, are the similarities due to parallel development, or are these inherited? Uh, uh, inheritance, common carried features. Uh, and of course, for different parts of this, of this list, I will probably give my uh, best uh, guesses in different ways, like gender, probably is inherited, property, uh, data subject experience is not that obvious, but it's also so common that we cannot exclude common inheritance, and so on. Uh, but ju just to put you in the framework of this kind of problem setting, uh, consider um, uh, the focus on the whole. And the two main features that are presented as um, uh, cross, uh, as a property of Caucasian Schwabund uh, are first the presence of ergative alignment, so in case marking and elsewhere, agreement for instance, uh, and adjectives in the same three families. So both South Caucasian or Kartvelian, uh, East Caucasian or Nazakistanian, and West Caucasian or Abhazadi. Uh, the family uh, have these three properties. But is it enough to say that this is something, uh, a, a quantitative, so aerial pattern, uh, in terms of being, can we, pause, can, can we argue, convincingly argue, that this is a result of aerial convergence? The problem is that for cognitivity, it's, both properties are not so much uncommon. Uh, in the in sample, um, in all sample of uh, uh, case alignment, um, roughly one third of the languages which have case mapping at all have permissive alignment. So I would say it's not a problem that they developed it uh, independently, especially to it um, uh, obvious that the three ergativities that we have in Abkhazia, Dike, East Caucasian, and South Caucasian are very different functionally, structurally, and other, under other respects. It's less, so, so maybe ergativity uh, is not a good candidate for an aerial property for, for, for commonality of uh, for uh, For adjectives, well, first of all, the presence of adjectives is in medicine sample is much lower, but still quite present. It's not an unusual thing, right? It's not very unusual thing. Uh, and second, adjectives spread to other languages uh, um, in the same area, but uh, not belonging to the same family. So, for instance, some Kumik dialects, uh, Ossetic acquired adjectives as a sound type. So, this is probably a better candidate for a reality. Um, uh, so, one of the most common issues in interpreting similarities within the family is to try and distinguish between inherited properties, uh, properties that have developed independently, so they had chances to develop independently from each other, develop and then they seem to be an aerial feature. That reminds me of, uh, of Rupert's yesterday talk, when he said that what seems for, at first glance to be an aerial feature between, in common between Ukrainian and Polish is in fact under a more close analysis shows up to be a much more complicated story. 
Um, or, for instance, it, uh, uh, so they might have developed independently, or what is interesting for us may, may have been acquired through leverage control. arguments that are usually uh, usually uh, in, uh, 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 used are, for instance, mismatch between Isaac losses and genetic boundaries uh, uh, between the groups. So, for instance, Archie is a lesbian language, and none of the lesbian language uh, has sound types like or fear, there are various lateral sounds, except Archie. So what could it be? It could be aerial influence from Avar and La, which are spoken in Avar, basically, because only Avar and uh, Avar, uh, Avar and Andalusian languages have this tre sounds. Uh, this is lateral stops and lateral adjectives. Uh, is it influence from Archie? But probably there is no clear boundary between what is in inheritance and context-induced change, because one could argue that in the case of our chi laterals, they have been preserved due to support from, um, from uh, neighboring languages. So, because Avar uh, used the same series of, uh, uh, of the laterals, and because it was being inherited from proto uh, it has been reconstructed to proto by uh, Stas and Nikolaev, it might have survived in this specific area, here, right? Uh, because of the aerial support rather than conflict induced change, uh, rather than just being spread from Avar to um, uh, to uh, to Arch. Um, so yeah, uh, so yeah, that's that's what I'm trying to argue for. It's not. I, I'm just suggesting that there are different interpretations of what we see, right? Um, uh, Another point of view suggested in, in literature is that the presence of a feature, that's very similar to what I just said, the presence of a feature in a neighboring language may not be just, we should not consider that as being adopted by a recipient of language. But sometimes people argue that a language may take two different ways, and which, with equal, equal probability. And taking one way of development, acquiring one feature, is facilitated by content being bilingual in a neighboring language. So it's not necessarily to, to see it as, okay, our skew is a special kind of perfect, we will adopt it because we are bilingual. It might work differently. You have a form which may typologically be prone to be developed either into, towards evidential, for instance, or towards ours. And you will take the evidential path because ours use a similar form as evidential. Okay? So it's not only adopting a feature, taking a feature, but looking at the others and developing uh, uh, and choosing a way, let's say, right? Um, also, there is an interesting uh, argument in uh, Julia Glennon's paper uh, that had been mentioned by, uh, by Ethan Rossman the other day, um, perceptual magnets. You have a very salient sound type in a neighbor language, and then you introduce this sound type into your language, because this is perceptual cell. And the question then is, what is it? Okay, this is phonological convergence, of course, but is, is it better or matter -born? And that's the first question that I wanted to address to you. Uh, if a neighbor language has, for instance, this, this uh, 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 famous uh, ejective lateral step, and I'm getting this uh, lateral into my language. Is it pattern borrowing or matter borrowing? You could see it either way. Because either you adapt the phonological system of your language to a phonological system to a, of another language, and that's then it's closer to uh, to matter uh, to pattern borrowing. Or else you can consider that as being a segment that you take off uh, uh, that you adapt from, from a neighboring language and put into your own system. Then it looks looks more like matter uh, uh, matter borrowing. Is there, what, what, what would, you, would be your feelings about that? For instance, we know that some Bantu languages um, uh, borrowed uh, clicks from, uh, from the nearby one of the Khoisan uh, group. Um, so what, how would you consider that? Is it, is it matter or pattern -born? That's a question. That, for instance, if you can argue, if you can argue that uh, the first step towards this reconstruction of the, of the system 
has been adopt, uh, has been borrowing specific lexical items containing this sound. This is closer to metaphor. You take metric and then you restructure your phonology as to, and then you reintroduce this sound as part of your native phonology. So it's first been uh, a, a metaphor and then developed into some, something that we can call a metaphor, a metaphor. And maybe that's much more common. Maybe it's much more common to have not just take a sound and introduce it into, uh, into your phonological system, but first you adopt some, lex some lexical items and then you use this lexical items as perceptual magnets, as she says, uh, to change your orthological system. Mm. I provided this example. That will be that will become important later when we look at the data. Maybe not today, uh, but I just provided this example to show you that the, even the distinction between pattern and metaphor is not that obvious sometimes. Okay. So what I'm going to do today is to review a number of cases with apparent similarities between the languages. And additionally, the patterns that we're going to consider are pretty rare typological, rare and unique, actually. Um, so we'll try to decide each time um, what possible scenario, linguistic scenario of, uh, of the spread of the feature, of the development of the feature may be positive for this specific case. Um, so yeah, I will use these examples as illustrations of how uh, similarities from uh, 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 similarities between the languages of the same family may provide for very different interpretations. Uh, okay, uh, and the first example, yeah. So the the example that I'm going to use are recipient alternation, what I call recipient alternation, a uh, uh, probably very very rare feature across linguistic language. Ordinal numerals uh, structure. Uh, this is based on Alina Lasvetsko and Ivan Yerkachev's uh, paper. Maybe some, some of you have seen it last year as a poster. They have now uh, produced a, a prepared a paper for publication on that. Um, uh, the category of very, very, I can't even pronounce that. That's so rare. <laughs> very uh, We we'll work together with uh, Timur Maisak, and before that, uh, Timur Maisak published on that uh, with uh, Solas Nadanova. Uh, then I will consider a very rare feature, first of all, gender, um, also um, analyzed in, uh, in uh, various publications by uh, Marina Trumatina and Greg Orbit. Uh, then I will, uh, I will present some fresher data uh, on apprehensive category. Uh, we work on together with Nina Nabushina. And then maybe tomorrow I will talk about objectives in the half dialect of Azerbaijan. Um, I see here at least two students, yeah, two students who might know uh, the story about receiving alternations, maybe three even, so I'm sorry. Um, but that's my favorite story, and I think it's, uh, it's a good story to start with, right? Um, so if you look now in handouts, Uh, no, the answer already. So, what would be your guess about what is the 
the distinction made uh, between one versus two. What I call is data strategy used in one A and one B, and latency strategy used in two A and two B in the two languages in, in the same languages, right? So we have data uh, strategy for encoding recipient available for uh, for Zapur and for Archi, and uh, you have latency uh, strategy available for them. Um, for the same languages. What would be the functional semantic difference between these two cases? I want you to stop too, for too long time with this example, so just give your ideas. Or maybe, if you don't have ideas, let's say Peter, if I don't have this small little video. Nina knows, of course. Any ideas? Okay, basically that was a question to the students, but now that the students are not so uh, eager to throw in their ideas, maybe uh, 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 professors may also participate. Those who are not. I don't know what you're going to say, I'm sure it's a piece of paper. No, I'm going to say it. It's a point of it. Okay, so do you have any? Any, any guesses? What could be the distinction? I can give you an explanation of, at least that would be easier maybe, if I give you an explanation of the context for 2B. Uh, so this is, uh, uh, yeah? Depends on maybe some people discuss this, I think the permanence or not. Exactly, exactly. So the first guess would be that this is permanent versus, uh, versus, uh, versus temporary recipient, let's say. So, temporary recipient is encoded by native, and permanent recipient is encoded by native. And the background of the story, I won't go into the background of, uh, of 2B, 2A, which fits very well into this, this, into this idea of temporary recipient. But in 2B, it's easier, it's someone who is hired to churn uh, butter. And uh, the owner of the, of the job, of the butter job, only gives this job to this uh, to this uh, hired man but temporarily, not to not for always. It, she does not offer it to him, but just uh, gives it to him so that he can uh, join. Uh, the problem is, however, here I won't ask you uh, more. Uh, yeah, so permanent versus temporary recipient. Uh, but the ne next um, example three and four, I won't torture you about these examples because that. Uh, some of you know already, and, uh, and it would take more time for other people to try this. Um, but the idea is that there are other examples which do not fit very well into what Marshall suggested uh, as temporary versus, recipient, uh, temporary versus permanent recipient. Because, for instance, uh, in the example three from Chen from a bear story, uh, the uh, the guy who picks up the hat from the uh, from the ground <coughs> and comes back to the to the person to the boy who lost the hat. He hands it back to him. Uh, it's obviously not a temporary recipient; it's something else, but still, it's in the latest what category. Or, for instance, in in example, do you follow me? Is it okay? So, in example three, it's not a, a permanent, permanent versus temporary recipient, but something else, right? In example four, uh, also uh, the story is about someone who transfers an object, uh, sends an object to his wife in the village with someone else. And then he questions, and then he uh, finds out that the thing has not been transferred to the, given to the, to the wife. And he, and he asks, why didn't you give what I gave you to, to my wife? Uh, even though the act of giving to the wife, is certainly a, a, a fact of, uh, of giving, it didn't happen, but it would be the fact of giving to, of, of an object to a permanent possessor, right? To a permanent person. Um, so <clears throat> what actually, I, I won't, Discuss it anymore. There is a, a, a handout on that, a, a kind of detailed handout uh, on that. So the idea behind that is is much subtler than permanent versus temporary. Uh, it's whether the situation involves change of uh, change of ownership or not. If I give back something to Nina uh, because Nina lost it, uh, I give it back per permanently, but I do not. I'm not the owner. So I do not transfer the ownership, right? Uh, if someone is supposed to bring something to my wife and to give it to her, again, he's not the owner, so he cannot 
the act of him, of his giving the object to, to my wife, is not the act of transfer of possession. So I, yeah, I provided here a small table, which is a kind of uh, uh, the situations which unlock the possibility of dative uh, encoding. So only giving permanently from someone who owns something and to another person who comes into possession of something allows the, the use of dative. All other situations, if they exclude transfer of ownership, all kinds of situations are covered by, by the rest of the table. So, for instance, if I give something temporarily to you, there is no transfer of ownership. That's only temporary, temporary gift. Uh, if I give back some, something, as we saw just in, in this example, I, again, I don't give it, uh, I, I do not, there is no transfer of possession. Uh, they transfer to, to a mediator or by a mediator, so I, if I give something to Nina to, to bring to my wife, or if Nina gives something that I gave her to bring it to, to my wife, uh, to, sorry, if she gives something to my wife, then ne neither of these, none of these situations, none of these four situations involves transfer of ownership, okay? Do you follow me? So this is pretty subtle, right? So this is not a very easy, uh, uh, easy opposition to, uh, to have for a language. Amazingly, all these languages, down to Udi, every single language of the family has this opposition. And in all the languages from which I have data, more, so all of these languages have this opposition between two, two recipients, and in every language where I checked the Nasir context, it worked exactly the same way. It worked along these very subtle lines. Okay? Except Udi. And here you might remember that Udi was, uh, uh, as I said, was, yeah, it's here. It's, uh, it's uh, isolated culturally also. Not only geographically isolated from the rest of the languages, but also culturally, because Udi were Christians and are Christians. So there is always their confessional power to this. Otherwise, uh, mm, otherwise, all these languages have, have the same distinction, even if they uh, have a very different spatial system, like Nath languages. Nath languages, Balsky and Chechen, as I said, they do not have the same kind of uh, two layer spatial morphology, but still they, have, they make the same distinction between. Uh, Transfer or non transfer of poetry. So let's discuss how this may have happened. So, coding the nature of transfer is pervasive across the family. That's the first point to keep in mind. Only, yeah, and so the, the distinctions are very subtle, but I'll repeat those that have been shown for Archie and uh, Antichen. To the best of our knowledge, right? Uh, there is none of the languages which. Some of the languages have, seem to have a weaker distinction, slightly weaker distinction, but otherwise it's, it's, it goes along, very, along, very, along the same lines. Um, typologically, this feature is, seems to be almost unique to this confession. I, at least again, to the best of my knowledge, I made, it, at some point I made a query at LinkedIn, and I only came, came up with a single, so what the configuration we're talking about here is encoding the nature of transfer on the recipient. Yesterday in the comment by Etab Adi, we heard that uh, a Lithuanian makes a distinction between permanent and, uh, and temporary transfer of possession on the theme, on the object being given, but not on the recipient. The only case I know where the choice of the case marker or on the recipient encodes very similar situation is uh, Tamil, as reported by my correspondent in, in with the reference to grammar software. Maybe other tributary languages. But I don't know other examples. So it, this seems to be pretty, uh, a pretty uncommon. Also important, in addition to this location, the same distinction is clearly present in the set. And you remember that, okay, you don't remember because it's not shown on the map, but the set is an Iranian language with a strong contact with math languages. And there are some theories that part of the uh, today ascetic speakers uh, have at some point spoke an unknown, probably unknown Nath language. And Nath, so they shifted from an unknown Nath language to ascetic, but they kept some of the, uh, some of the structures, as we know, happens so, uh, uh, so often 
uh, and they spread this uh, pocket structure, this pattern, to, uh, to the whole uh, aesthetic community. Um, so this is a very clear case of contact-induced change, because none uh, of, of other Iranian languages shows this very subtle distinction. Only Ascetic, which is spoken in the vicinity of, uh, uh, of Nath language, so this is a very clear case of contact change. Uh, there are examples, um, I don't know how much time I have. Uh, uh -huh. uh, yeah, we may, we may want to look at the example 6, which I have uh, from a paper that is being prepared by Alec uh, and myself together. Um, um, I love this example because this example from Shakespeare, from translation of Shakespeare uh, uh, into Ossetic. And so uh, basically, it's a sailor is my lord, they say. So, who gave you, you remember this, this, this scene when, uh, when the king asks uh, Claudio, who gave you this letter from Hamlet? And he says, Sailor is my lord, he gave it to me. I saw them not. They were given me letters, sorry. Uh, no, that's not Claudio. Saying, yeah. They were given to me by Claudio. And here, uh, me, to me, is encoded not by a date. But, but by a spatial form, which I would call latent strategy in this language, because he is not the address of the letter, right? The letter has been given to him so that he can transfer it to, to the king. So he, there is no change of ownership in the fact of giving him the letter. Is it clear here? So it works very much in the same way as in these Caucasian languages. Um, mm, yeah. What is more problematic is interpreting the spread of this feature across this location. While we are absolutely sure that it has been spread through contact to aesthetic, well, that you can hardly argue against this interpretation. It's um, there are different interpretations of most of what might have happened in the within the country. And that brings us to the problem of considering language contact within the family. Uh, with no great deal. Um, it's important, of course, that the forms that I used for the latest strategy are the markers, are not cognate across the world. So this decreases the probability of the distinction being inherited from, uh, from the proto language. Uh, also, very importantly, while in many languages, the localization, the, the special meaning which is used to uh, render this uh, absence of transfer of position is something like beside, added uh, meaning, so close to, to someone, right? So instead of saying, basically instead of saying I gave it to you, uh, you're saying I gave it in your vicinity, more or less. And that, Quite a few languages here at the table show these different versions of this strategy. What is labeled differently is basically essentially is, is a very similar notion. Possessive localization, output, uh, human locative, ad, etc. But there are some languages which use a very different strategy. There is abu, which uses super on something. There are uh, dharma languages which use in. Although it's called polysemous, but it's certainly not an apple meaning because Adama languages have their own apple meaning. Then you also have Archie, which is a quant meaning. Uh, the basics of the quant meaning is uh, being someone on the wall or uh, a, a, a fly which walks on the ceiling, right? So this is the basic meaning of this localization. So this is important that not only the markers are not cognate between the branches. Uh, but also the functions of the same markers even within the branches uh, you know, are very different. So what could we suggest here as a possible scenario? The, 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 especially, the, so especially the last fact about this phenomenon um, makes me think that uh, the let me see, yeah, uh, that the uh, uh, model used here was chain bilingualism. So, what I mean by chain bilingualism <coughs> is uh, the transfer of a property through a chain of small scale uh, communities uh, speaking each other languages. 
Why I'm saying this? It's important uh, that only in the north of Dagestan, or central Dagestan in other terms, uh, there have been a big local lingua franca, or at least in, in, the, in the observable past, as Nina Gabrushin uh, uh, this time uh, demonstrated, uh, talked about yesterday, uh, the only clear case of an East, of an East Caucasian language is used uh, as lingua franca in the observable past was Abba in central to north Dagestan. In, the, in south Dagestan, Again, we cannot observe any traces of a lingua franca. So, how could this uh, this uh, feature uh, be transferred from uh, from uh, one to the other Latin language? In Turkic languages of the area, which serve as a lingua franca, there is no such distinction. So, we cannot suggest uh, uh, transfer by uh, by a lingua franca. It should be some kind of small local uh, uh, local uh, small scale. Multilingualism, which have been a uh, medium for, for the spread of this feature. But of course, there are other options available. Um, I will talk about this later, so what I would probably call substitutive inheritance, but I will call, uh, talk about that in more detail in, in the next example. Um, okay, so another example comes from a research done. So various languages of Dagestan show a peculiar strategy of ordinal formation. Uh, sorry, it's in plural, it's in neural. Sorry, uh, that's a typo. Um, cardinal numerals followed by a participle of same. Uh, the example seven given here from lesbian literally says, uh, my sister to whom they say to, literally. That's the way to, to convey the meaning of second. My second sister is literally uh, my sister to whom uh, one says to, one is supposed to say to, and so on. Um, here's a, a beautiful map built with Dyke's uh, uh, George Maros uh, 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 art package, linked technology, uh, and used by Palina and uh, Anya uh, to build this visualization of the spread of the picture. So those languages which have a black core use something else. Specifically, not languages here uh, use. Uh, it's not uh, sorry. Each dot is not a language. Each dot is a set language. Okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, the languages with uh, represented as as uh, uh, with uh, black core, they use something else. Not languages use. Um, a dedicated affix, non etymologizable in, uh, in Bush and Chechen. Also, but in other languages here. Uh, the two languages here, Buddha and, and Hinalo, uh, they use, we don't know which one they use, because uh, nowadays they only use uh, uh, um, uh, items borrowed from Azerbaijan. But Chris has a clear uh, trace of this. They, Chris also use uh, borrowed. Uh, uh, but you can also see the traces of this strategy. And you can see that all Lesbian languages, all La, uh, Darwa here, uh, um, Avar, uh, and Achi uh, use this, uh, uh, this same <coughs> strategy of forming uh, audio numerals, right? So it's present in Lesbian, La, Darwa, yeah. Go, uh, can you go back to one side? What about the, uh, the Sezik divergence? What's what's uh, here? Yeah, the two. I I I, I saw it yesterday. I didn't check for which of the Sezik languages doesn't use it. Uh, it seems that some of these languages might. Ah. I think that might be Beshtar, but I'm not sure because one of these languages has a complicated story. Uh, we went to Beshtar last year, uh, and Mani and Palina collected the uh, the, uh, the patterns, uh, uh, and it seems to be that in some in literature uh, the say strategy has been attested. For, for a language where now it's not irreproducible. Actually, the same story is about Udia, I think. It has been presented in the literature, but not in nowadays uh, speakers. Um, yeah, so you see kind of clear, more or less clear pattern here. The problem is, uh, the problem uh, are anti languages because they are very closely related to Akbar, and one of them, Akbar, has the same strategy, while other Tesic languages do not have. 
the blue ones, the blue ones static are red and the blue ones are, um, uh, are uh, empty. So what can we suggest for this kind of stuff? Again, uh, this is extremely unfrequent or non-existent elsewhere in the world. Uh, there is a <coughs> survey made by Nastetskova in the as a, as a follow-up uh, to their uh, to their uh, talk to their uh, paper on uh, on fourteen um, uh, numerals in, in this occasion. She just take a, 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 a wall, basically a wall sample. Uh, she, uh, she, uh, she took a wall sample and she controlled the ways to to. Uh, Extremely unfrequent, maybe non-existent, because not in, in, only in the, in the only case, few case, in the few cases where uh, an author would argue for a connection between C and the suffix for autonomous, it's really bad. It's etymolo etymological connection rather than very clear connection, as in case of of, uh, of lesbian. Because if you look back at example seven, the form here lie is an absolutely normal form, or form which is a positive of C. You can use it uh, separately from, from the uh, from the cardinal numeral. So it's a true participle from the right? So it's pretty transparent. In other cases, uh, inspected by Vanina, for the number none of them is is, uh, is uh, addressed into the same stuff. Also, an important thing is that the languages use non cognate words for say across the branches. So the same argument as in the case of a, of the spread of the the transition, right? So this would suggest that this is some kind of chain, uh, chain multilingualism thing again. However, the problem is that uh, this map, as the paper uh, written by Ms. Veskova and Yankachev uh, shows, is a bit simplistic. Because not all of our dialects are the same. In some of these dialects, uh, this is more transparent. In some of these dialects, it's less transparent. Some of uh, languages in this in this area clearly use the, the standard suffix. They just borrow the standard suffix from uh, from Avar, maybe unanalyzable within the language, right? So this is more kind of matter borrowing than matter borrowing. And this is really hard to distinguish because you, you deal here with Avar dialects, with the dialects of, of one language. Also. When we discussed that with uh, when the students discussed that with Yakov Sosnets mentioned yesterday, uh, 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 a very good thinker and a very deep think thinking uh, uh, apologist of East Slovakian languages, he suggested why don't you consider a possibility that you have a pattern which is handed down from the proto language but, but is filled with new lexical material. So you have the pattern of forming uh, ordinal numerals uh, by the construction uh, the one to which you say three. Third equals the one to which you say three. But then the verb say itself becomes obsolete and is substituted by another verb say using the same construction. And while we are talking about this Locutional, let's say, very festive ways of expressing the, the meaning. That's not an improbable scenario. So something might have been traveling down the, 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 the tree, the linguistic tree, uh, changing the form, but preserving the, 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 the pattern. And we can really very, very hard to evaluate the, the influence of the contact of the mutual support of the same construction between languages of, of the bilingual, bilingualism uh, and the and basically, to tell the truth, the C applies to the previous slide, to the previous story, to the story about, uh, about data, uh, data strategies. It might also be the case that it, the strategy itself is pretty ancient, might in principle go back to uh, to you know, to but is fed by different lexical material. Although I think that in the case of data strategy, it's less, slightly less probable because Agu, Lesbian uh, have introduced other functionally different morphemes to convey the same meaning. You remember that Archie uses not Agu, but, uh, uh, but 
font on me, uh, or that why I use is not output near me, but in inside me, and so on. So this kind of fact draw a little uh, um, uh, give more grounds to consider that as as a as a contact spread. Yeah. Um, I, I take the point that it makes it difficult to, to make a firmer argument for contact, but. Um, there's also the possibility that the contact is reinforcing the maintenance of the pattern. Sure. So if you find related languages outside the contact zone that have lost it, then that might support the contact. You mean the, the error distribution? Yeah. Or, right. So if you find related languages outside the error distribution, then. So for instance, then, let's take math. Uh -huh. The story is here maybe very different. We cannot give an etymology to this suffix, mm -hmm. it may come from something totally. I have an attribute divisor, as in, in some ethnic languages. Some ethnic languages use an attribute divisor suffix here. But it might also come from morphologization of the verb say, which happened in some dialects of Abad, right? Or in some other languages, where the connection between the construction of say and, uh, and, um, and the original uh, source of grammaticalization, uh, the verb say, has been obscured, if not lost, right? So here again, you may suggest very different scenarios of what happens here, why this does not happen. And presently, I see no way to, to, to see through this time, time depth. Okay, let's move to, uh, uh, to another, a totally different story. Um, so, Achi has a four way gender distinction masculine, feminine, third class, and a fourth class in the C in singular, but that's not. So important for us, uh, what is more, more important is the two-way distinction in the plural between humans and non-humans. So let's now again look at in the, in the handout, examples 8, 9, and 10. Uh, what do you think is unexpected in the examples here? Who can see the problem in the examples? First student. So, do, do you see any problems with the, with the example? Okay, professors. Okay, <laughs> you know the story. <laughs> Any comments? Any ideas? What's wrong with the question? Uh, what is. Okay, so you have an input here, human versus not human. And then you have the examples 8, 9, and 10. Sorry, yeah, maybe I, I was. Okay, Marshall. Again. <laughs> so you're halfway between the student and non student. Okay. Yeah? Um, so you say human and non human, but here you have pronouns. Right, exactly. So uh, what is. What is Peculiar about Apache's system, and has been first noted by Kibidik in his famous grammar of Apache, is that personal pronouns, we and you plural, control what appears to be not human uh, gender. There are different interpretations of this fact, uh, different views. Is it a person? Is it something else? Is it, uh, so I called it, uh, I hope, neutrally, person by a gender. Uh, there are Loads of more interesting facts about this, this story. I won't go into the details. Um, what is important is that same pattern is a test between Darwa and Chechen in the same pattern. Exactly the same pattern. You have non human plural agreement, both in most Darwa dialects, except at least the web, maybe some other uh, dialects do not show it, but the uh, uh, web probably either, pro most probably lost it. Uh, because it, it seems to be not very recent development. It's so widespread across the Dalva uh, branch that it seems to be pretty, pretty old. Uh, but but um, uh, but lost, lost it, and then Chechen not and then Bush have it, but Bats do not have it. Um, technologically, again, rare. That's another point in meeting that I made years ago, and I basically I didn't get any. Positive answers of a similar situation. Um, 
something very, I don't remember the story, but something similar has been suggested by Mike Ciso Kutukanon, but I'm not sure what was the, exactly the story there. Uh, and it didn't seem to me exactly the same. So gender, so person uh, expressed by gender means. The problem, however, is that if you look back at the map, you see that Alchi is here, Dagwa is here, and Nagwa is here, but Nagwa does not have this. And Nathan and Jesus are here. So all these three branches are not in any way in apparent contact. And in, it's, it's really hard to, to argue for a contact of the best. Well, no one knows what it was. Yeah. I'm trying to remember his exact argument, but I think that Daniel Harbour has on, on his, and I'm not remembering completely. Kiowa. Huh? Kiowa? Or? Um, yeah, yeah, Kiowa. And, and uh, just the. the Maybe he's not specifically talking about gender, but he's making the, 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 the person agreement. You see the lumping of the second and first because it's that, that's different. It's a different. That's different. That's much more common. That happens in the Damascus uh, or in some African languages. Also, you have the same uh, uh, means at least, lexical means, and that's some probably agreement for for first and second plural, okay. like here, okay. exactly. Like here. Uh, but what? How would you? Approach a phenomenon like that. It's, pretty, it's absolutely rare, maybe non existent uh, outside the family, we don't know about any parallels. It's present within the same family, but without apparent contact opportunities. This is a totally different story, right? Because uh, before that, we had contiguous maps of feature, more or less contiguous, let's say, uh, with adjacent uh, languages using the same category and loss maybe in the periphery, like Nach uh, for ordinals and so on, or Udi for, uh, for native, like in, in the periphery you can lose or never develop this kind of thing. Um, okay, uh, is it inherited? Oh, of course there is a possibility. And, and as Johanna once, uh, once put it, when I was talking to her about this topic, she said, that's exactly the case when people say it's inherited. Uh, when it's, uh, when, when it's uh, uh, present in different parts of the family. Uh, my problem is that it's uh, present, yes, it's present in, in different parts of the family, but it's very poorly uh, represented in this family. So you have Archie um, uh, for Lesnik, uh, you have, uh, part, uh, you have all, almost all the other languages, but you, don't, you have uh, English and, 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 and Chechen, but don't have but, but of course it's it can be inheritance. It can be something very ancient. I doubt it. It's too transparent for me to be, to be very ancient. But of course, this, this is a possibility. So the possi another possibility that I suggest to explain this uh, uh, this thing uh, is, and, and the problem with the inheritance is that you can not. This is kind of now hypothesis. You cannot disprove this in this case. So what I suggest here is maybe not not less speculative. But as I said, inherited hypothesis in this case is 100% peculiar because you cannot prove it. Another was that I'm trying to, to approach this, this commonality from the functional, from the typology part uh, perspective. And what I suggest is um, that it is a kind of polite shift. I won't go into detail, uh, but basically what I mean is that to make the address less direct, you move from animate reference, uh, from human reference to non-human reference. In a way, slightly similar, as you say, as you use third person lay in Italian instead of, uh, of, uh, of second person, um, or you use, for instance, French on, uh, which has been transformed in all. Uh, similar in, in similar developments in Portuguese, so you, you, you have it somewhere. But what you have usually is a transfer from second person to third person, and here you have a gender change from, uh, from uh, human to not human. Uh, my interpretation of this would be as follows. The language does not, these languages uh, do not have a person category with at least with three, with three different categories. Um, except Tagba, but Tagba has a very special kind of uh, um, uh, kind of person system, rather inverse system uh, than what we than what, what, what used to. 
Medinina may model it along the usual first, second, third person, but I... You're not a human. You 
increase the distance. That's the negative politeness. Negative politeness is saying there is no connection between, between you and me. That may be used as humiliation in other languages. But it may be used also, there's quite a few languages which, in, in which increase in the, in the distance uh, shows the negative politeness. So you are not involved with me. You are not. Yeah, okay, so okay. develop a certain kind of politeness. Uh, in the languages where which have person, they usually follow the person uh, down rating or the number, uh, number up rating. They use plural instead of singular or third person instead of plural, different kind of indirect reference, uh, decreasing directness. Uh, so let's consider every language in the world has certain probability of developing this politeness. If this probability is applied to a language which does not have person, of course I understood that there is a, a problem with your interpretation of that but yeah. uh, I see it different, really. Um, uh, then the, uh, the category which is apt to be used as this indirect shift, to me, my hypothesis, is gender. So of course it does not need to happen in all languages of the family. There is certain probability that it happen in, in every language. But it happens independently in different parts. That was the idea. You have a certain probability of a development uh, caused by structural properties of the language, shared by the whole family, but not in all languages of the family this path is taken. That was the idea. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but. There are, yeah, that's, that's, that's not a question to, to the explanation, but there are special tenses by the plural and not the singular. I don't, first, I, I, I heard this question, but personally, I don't feel very strong uh, problem here, rather in, in, what, in what Nina said about the dark about person. But, yeah, I agree, that's, that's something which has to be at least taken into account. Yeah. Uh, so, just an idea that would probably be impossible to test, but I wonder if um, Uh, in 
I didn't say it here, maybe it's said later, it's, it's uh, uh, present in Achi, uh, in uh, uh, Agul, which are two less frequent groups, but also in the web in Chirag, which are two, uh, two um, uh, dark languages, right? So it's etymologically related to see in all of these languages except maybe some Agul dialect. And it's interesting more syntactically because it's, uh, it behaves as a highly bound predicate. It has been discussed in one of the, uh, as highly bound predicate, sorry. It introduces its own arguments in all these languages. Uh, the verb C, even though it's grammaticalized into a morphological marker for what is called verificative, uh, is, um, uh, is uh, uh, still introduces its own uh, tense aspect mood slot and, uh, and uh, argument positions. Um, so, for instance, in Archi, you can very easily see that there is verb with its own, sorry, there is uh, that aspect mood slot here, then interrogative, and then pus, which very clearly comes from akkus, c. Um, so, this attested, this attested in these three languages, in these four languages, Archi plus these three languages. Again, if you look at the map, you see that they are dispersed. There is no close connection between them. Here's Archi. Uh, he is a ghoul. Chirac is here, so quite probably Chirac might be uh, Chirac, the presence of Chirac of, uh, of very in Chirac and Agul could, in principle, be explained by quantum. But also, it, also, it is also present here in the web. And the web is not, uh, is not connected in any way to Archie or has been disconnected from other. Uh, body of uh, double languages, and uh, important in this case where it does not seem to be represented in other double languages. So again, we have a very similar situation. Uh, we have a situation where you have the same category, probably unique to these languages, or not, at least not very technologically widespread, that's for sure. Uh, not a test at least in, in our queries, my, my Timur's queries to, to police. Not a test elsewhere. Grammaticalization of C, which leads to the uh, 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 to the appearance of a, of a category which is which we call it. What could that be? So, because we have uh, too few time, uh, I move into the explanation. Um, the use of construction, see whether P is seems to be common. I know I did. I never I never checked it cross linguistically, but if, even even if you look at English, you have exactly the same syntactic pattern, construction pattern. Uh, see what see that he comes for instance. Make sure that he comes. Similar construction. Or see whether he came. Check whether he came. Not exactly see visually, but it's it developed constructionally into something like uh, verification what I call verification category for what is that? Um, the construction like that is probably much more widespread in the languages of the area. That has been checked for some languages uh, by Timur. Um, uh, for instance, for luck, and for some other language, and it seems to be present there. So you can say, literally translated from English, he saw whether something happened, or he saw who came, right? In the same category, you use the verb see, then you use an indirect question, and then uh, embedded clause. So the only difference from uh, of the language Archia, Google, and the two dog dialects is morphologization of this. So they follow the path towards morphologization, and that happens in this language because in Archi and Agul, for instance, the verb say has been morphologized in a very similar way. It still has its, its arguments, so it has kind of pre preserved some, some part of its predicative nature, but it's a morphological mark on the on the left, on the embedded verb. That's what Nasty Panola was talking about yesterday um, in the typological perspective. Um, so here I think the explanation is much less controversial. You have the same background, construction background, from which independently some of the languages take this path towards developing uh, morphological construction with, this, with the same meaning. Languages do not have to morphologize the verb C into a very specific morpheme. But they all have an option to do that because they have this construction. Of course, this has been checked. Um, in the data by showing that other languages also have indeed this construction. Otherwise, if it turns out that the construction C whether P is true in this language is not that widespread, then it means that, that we need another better explanation for the grammaticalization of the same very rare category 
uh, in the language. But logic here is more or less at the same as in the previous case of the, of the, of the person who added gender and much less controversial. So it's much less because it's easier to check. Okay? So this, this is uh, another story. Uh, and I don't know whether we can go through this. Or should we go tomorrow? Do we have what? We have two minutes. Maybe I have to do it tomorrow. Uh, maybe you have some questions here. I, I got, you may not criticize uh, the third story anymore. You got your, uh, your um, skepticism about that. Uh, but let it stay with you as an example of otherwise very unclear case of family internal resemblance, uh, which is hard to explain um, uh, uh, by contact because of the uh, aerial discontinuity. Uh, so we are, we are on the left with inheritance, and here intuitively I'm pretty dubious, but I cannot, and no one can uh, suggest any kind of counter evidence against common inheritance. Yeah, so if you have questions, maybe do the, do the topics that we consider so far. Yeah. Yes, I didn't quite understand the examples to be. To be, okay. Why do you consider these the reasons of self-evaluation? Yeah, because this is a situation, okay, you can't guess it because there is no context, but the situation is uh, that uh, a pauper comes to a, a widow lady uh, and asks her for uh, something to do, to earn some money. And so she asks him repeatedly to do several different things. Uh, and the first thing she asks him to do is to churn butter. So uh, she, gave, she, she gives him a jug with milk, but she doesn't give the jug of milk to him uh, permanently. That's her jug uh, that remains uh, her jug of milk to churn, so to be returned after 